Coffee Break Italian Season 1, Episode 22. Ciao a tutti, io sono Mark. Ciao, sono Francesca. Buongiorno, sono Katie. And we're back with another episode of Coffee Break Italian for you. Come state? Francesca, come stai? Io sto benissimo, grazie. Tu, Mark? Anche io sto bene, grazie. E Katie? Sì, sto bene, grazie. We're all very well and very pleased to be back here with another episode of Coffee Break Italian for you. Last time we were talking about the weather. So, Katie, ho una domanda per te. Sì? Che tempo fa oggi? Mm, fa freddo. Fa freddo? Sì. Come sempre in Scozia? Sì. E? E... Non piove. Non piove? Benissimo. So we can make the negative form of piove by just adding a non in front. Non piove, so it's not raining. It's unusual. It is quite unusual for it not to be raining. E c'è il sole? Un po', sì. Ah, c'è un po' di sole. Sì. Ok, so you can see there's a little sun. C'è un po' di sole. C'è un po' di sole. Perfetto. Francesca, mi hai detto che stavi parlando con la tua amica. Sì, Giovanna. Stamattina, Giovanna. E ti hai detto che fa bel tempo in Italia, non è vero? Sì, fa bel tempo, c'è il sole, fa caldo. Siete fortunati in Italia, sì, no? Sì, fortunatissimi. But of course, Francesca's here in Scotland, where it's a little colder than it was in Italy. So in Italy, did you get what the weather was like in Italy? What did you see, Francesca? Giovanna said it was? Caldo. Mm-hmm. Bello, uh-huh. c'è il sole. È eh, molto importante. Sì. Ok, today we're going to move on and do something a little bit different because one of the things that you'll encounter when you're traveling in Italy is that certain things might happen, certain things that you may have to deal with in Italian. And one of these is when things don't go quite so well health-wise. You might have a sore head, you might have stomachache. You might have a sore back and you'll need to perhaps visit a pharmacy to get some help with that. So we're going to be looking at this topic over this lesson and the next lesson. And we're starting today by learning some parts of the body. Allora, siamo pronti? Sì, cominciamo! Okay, let's begin by looking at some parts of the body. Parts of the body where we may have things sore. For example, the head. Come si dice the head in italiano? Si dice la testa. Listen again. La testa. La testa. So the head is la testa. How would we say a head? Kitty. Una testa? Una testa, certo. Una testa, la testa, obviously a feminine word. Let's look at a masculine word for a different part of the body and that would be Lo stomaco, the stomach. Lo stomaco. Lo stomaco. Now you'll have noticed that that's a lo word because it starts with st. Lo stomaco. A uh, stomach, if we were using an indefinite article, would be? Uno stomaco. Good. Uno stomaco because it starts with st. And out of curiosity, Katie, just testing your understanding of this grammar point, how would we say stomachs, the stomachs, the plural form? Gli stomachi? Sì, gli stomachi, or you could also say gli stomachi. It's a tricky word. A tricky word, yeah. We'll not go into that one, and let's face it, we're unlikely to be talking about multiple stomachs, unless we're talking about camels or cows, I believe. Camels and cows have multiple stomachs. Okay. Va bene, andiamo avanti. Andiamo avanti. Okay, another word for another part of the body that we could be talking about here when we're talking about pains and so on would be gola, the word for throat. Gola. Gola. I think we've heard that before. I think you had a sore throat one time, Mark. I did indeed have a sore throat one time when we were recording Coffee Break Italian. Can you remember how to say I have a sore throat? Because that's actually what we're just about to come on to. Mm. I have a sore throat or I have throat ache. Mm, oh, male di gola? Almost, almost. It's very close. Sì. Si. Oh, mal di gola. Not male, but mal. So, male becomes mal for this expression. Oh, mal di. 
and then whatever it is that is sore, particularly when you're talking about something that's kind of recognized as a thing that you get sore, like headache, throat ache, stomach ache, back ache, and so on. So try saying, I have a sore throat or I have throat ache. O oh, mal di gola. Molto bene. O oh, mal di gola. Okay, now let's now try saying, I have a headache. Francesca, can you tell us what I have a headache would be? Ho oh, mal di testa. Ho oh, mal di testa. So, testa is head. O oh, mal di testa. I have bad of head. O oh, mal di testa. And we've also learned stomach. So, how would we say stomach ache? I have belly ache. Katie, can you work that one out? O mal di stomaco. Perfetto. È molto facile, non è vero? Mm, sì. Sì, sì. <laughs> <laughs> so, o mal di, plus whatever it is that's hurting. And again, this is where we're talking about specific things that tend to be sore, like headaches, throat aches. Uh, what about backache? We mentioned backache already. How do you say back? Schiena. So it's a feminine word? Sì, si, la schiena. La schiena. La schiena. So, Katie, how would you say I have backache? O mal di schiena. Perfetto. O mal di schiena. O mal di gola. O mal di testa. What about I have earache? Ears is orecchie. Mm -hmm. O mal di orecchie. So, let's break down ears a little, because that's quite complicated. Ears, in the plural form, is... Orecchie. So, that's le orecchie, mm. the ears. What is one ear, an ear? Mm, it's l'orecchio. It's a masculine noun. So, it's masculine in the singular. And feminine in the plural, yes. So, the plural form would be... Le orecchie. Le orecchie. So, how would we say, I have earache? Kitty. O mal di orecchie? Yeah, o mal di orecchie. Sì, perfetto. Francesca, how would you say, I have toothache? Uh, well, in Italian, we would really say, I have teeth ache. We would use the plural. So, the word for teeth is I denti. Do you want to try, Katie? O oh, male di denti. Okay, just watch your male. It's not male, it's mal. Ah, yeah, mal. O oh, mal di denti. Bravissima. O oh, mal di denti. O oh, mal di denti. So, let's think about the word denti. I denti are the teeth. What's a tooth? Un dente. And the tooth? Il dente. So, dente is the singular form, il dente, un dente, and then the plural form becomes... I denti. So, that's a pattern that we've seen many times. I in the singular, moving to I in the plural. So, just to be clear, that's the letter E, so it sounds E, and it moves to I, the letter I, which sounds E. Just to complicate things, but I'm sure if you're looking at our notes, this will all make perfect sense. Okay, so different things, different parts of the body where we may have some kind of ache. And you'll notice that so far we've been looking particularly at these parts of the body which really are involved in toothache, backache, headache, earache, and so on. That's all very well, but sometimes there are other parts of the body which are sore, and we need to know how to say that too. So, for example, what's the word for the arm, Francesca? Il braccio. Listen again to that word. Il braccio. Il braccio. Now, Francesca, can you say, I have arm ache <laughs> o mal di braccio? Um, no, not really. It sounds a bit strange, doesn't it? Yes. So, how would we say, my arm is sore? You can say, mi fa male il braccio. Let's think about this and translate it literally. Mi fa male il braccio. So, to me makes bad the arm. 
Yes. It sounds a little yeah. strange. <laughs> but it's the literal but translation. If you think of it that way, to me makes bad the arm, then we can use that same construction and use it for other words too. So, mi fa male il braccio, my arm is sore, or to me makes bad the arm. Let's hear Kitty saying that. And it is male this time, not bad. Uh-huh. <laughs> it is male, yeah, good point. Mi fa male il braccio. Mi fa male il braccio. Molto bene, mi fa male il braccio. So let's change it to perhaps the leg. What's the leg? La gamba. La gamba. Katie, using the same construction as we've looked at earlier, to me makes bad the leg. How would you say that your leg is sore? Mi fa male la gamba. Molto bene, sì. Mi fa male la gamba. Let's add another one in and we could talk about uh, the nose. Il naso. Il naso. So, Katie, how would you say, my nose is sore? Mi fa male il naso. Benissimo. Mi fa male il naso. Okay, let's learn some more words here. We could talk about... Uh, help me, Francesca, some other words. Il piede. Il piede, certo. Il piede. Katie, I'm sure you can guess what il piede would be. The foot. Yes. Sì. So how would you say, I've got a sore foot? Mi fa male il piede. Il piede. Piede. Mi fa male il piede. Mi fa male il piede. So you could go to a pharmacy and say, mi fa male il piede. My foot is sore. You could add in something else here. You could say, mi fa male il piede, non posso camminare. What do you think that might mean? I have a sore foot. I can't walk. Well, guessed, yes, you can't walk, camminare. Probably similar to the a Spanish like word. Spanish, yes. yeah. <laughs> Helps me out there. So, non posso camminare, I cannot walk. You've recognised non posso, which is something we've seen before. Mi fa male il piede, non posso camminare. What about mi fa male la bocca? Katie, can you remember what la bocca is? We've seen this phrase or this word before, once before, when we were talking about in bocca al lupo. Oh, in mouth of the wolf? Yes. Mm. So mi fa so male la bocca. I have a sore mouth. My mouth's sore. Non posso parlare. I can't speak. Although if you're saying non posso <laughs> parlare, I think there's something wrong. So mi fa male la bocca. Mi fa male la bocca. Non posso parlare. Non posso parlare. So something else that you may have sore that would mean that you couldn't speak could be your throat. You already know how to say I have a sore throat. O mal di gola? Sì, perfetto. Can you also say mi fa male la gola? Of course you can. As well as you can say uh, mi fa male la testa, mi fa male lo stomaco or mi fa male la schiena. So the mi fa male can be used with all the different parts of the body, whereas the o mal di is more specific. That's just the ones that are more like headache, earache, toothache and so on. So, o mal di gola, non posso parlare, or mi fa male la gola, non posso parlare. So those two work there with gola. Now, let's come back a little to il piede. Mi fa male il piede. What does that mean? I have a sore foot. I have a sore foot or my foot is hurting, my foot is sore. Remember, in English, we have certain phrases that we use and we're not trying to translate those individual phrases into Italian. What we're trying to do is speak about that concept in Italian. So if you have a pain in your foot, you can say, Mi fa male il piede. My foot is sore. But what about if both your feet are sore? Il piede is the word for the foot. Francesca, what is the feet? I piedi. So the E ending becomes an I ending. The piede becomes piedi. I piedi, the feet. And something also happens to the verb. Because as you're aware, mi fa male il piede. The fa is a verb. And the subject of that verb is il piede. So we have to change that verb if the subject becomes plural. In this case, i piedi. Francesca, come si dice my feet are sore? Mi fanno male i piedi. Listen again. 
Mi fanno male i piedi. Mi fanno male i piedi. Mi fanno male i piedi. Okay, so mi fanno is what you use when it's a plural part of the body. For example, we also remember the word for ear. The ear would be... L'orecchio. And we also heard what the ears were. Le orecchie. Le orecchie. So, Katie, how would you say, my ears are sore? Mi fanno male le orecchie. Molto bene. Mi fanno male le orecchie. Can I just ask, is fanno, the way that changes for the plural, is that similar to mi piace, mi piacciono? Si, is the same logic behind it. If it's something singular, it's fa. If it's something plural, it's fanno. Same as piace and piacciono. And we're actually going to see this pattern in greater detail because we're just going to be going on to talk about the conjugation of a verb. And that fanno and piacciono is what's called the third person plural of the verb. It's the form for they. If you're talking about your feet, then the pronoun you would use is they. They are sore, my feet are sore, or my ears are sore, or whatever. So we'll see that in just a moment. Let's think about o mal di again. O mal di gola, I have throat ache, I have a sore throat. If I'm saying I have a sore throat, I'm using o. Katie, you already know how to say you have. You have a brother, for example. How would you say you have? I. I. So that's the informal form of you have. So Katie, how would you say you have a headache? I mal di testa. Si. I mal di testa. Or a question. Do you have a headache? I mal di testa. No. No, no, mal di testa. <laughs> Benissimo. Okay, so I, the you form. Now, let's think about the he or she form, because let's face it, you may be going to a pharmacy or a doctor and perhaps you're the Italian speaker, but your friend or your, your family member has a headache. So to say he or she has a headache, we say? A mal di testa. A mal di testa. So it's o mal di testa, I have a headache. I mal di testa, you have a headache. And a mal di testa, he or she has a headache. Is that a the same as the formal form that we learned in the restaurant? Exactly, yes. So I think we learned something like a bisogno di una forchetta. Do you need a fork or something like that? A, H A, is spelt, and that exactly means. He has, she has, or you have in the formal form. O, I, A. Let's go on, because there's something else that we want to do. We've talked about singular forms. We now need to talk about plural forms. So the plural forms are we have, and that would be... Abbiamo. So if we have been listening to loud music all night, we could say we have a headache. Abbiamo mal di testa. Abbiamo mal di testa. Abbiamo. So we have abbiamo. And then the you plural form is something that we've heard before. It's... Avete. Avete. Katie, can you remember the context that we've heard that one in? I think we asked, avete camere libere? Do you have any um, free rooms? So we're asking multiple people, do you have? In the case of in a hotel, we're asking all the people who work in the hotel, do you have free rooms? Avete. So do you have a headache? Asking lots of people would be, Katie? Avete mal di testa? Okay, after listening to all that music. Mm -hmm. So, o, ai, a, abbiamo, avete... And then there's one more form, and that is the plural they form. Okay, so it's the third person plural. And it's going to sound a little like something we spoke about earlier in this episode. Francesca, how do you say they have? Anno. Anno. Katie, do you see what I'm referring to here? It sounds like... Fanno. Fanno. Okay, so fanno, they do. Literally, they do 
bad to me, mi fanno male i piedi. And here, anno, H-A-N-N-O, is they have. So if you're talking about your children, anno mal di testa, they have a headache. Anno mal di testa. Let's try seeing the whole verb together. I'll say the English. Francesca, you can say the Italian. Okay. And then, Kitty, you can repeat the, the Italian after Francesca. I have. O. O. You have. I. I. He or she has, or you have formal. A. A. We have. Abbiamo. Abbiamo. You, plural, have? Avete. Avete. And they have? Anno. Anno. Now, these six parts of the verb are the way in which we learn all verbs in Italian, just like we would learn six forms of a verb in French or Spanish or indeed many other languages. So it's hopefully something that you're familiar with. If not, it doesn't matter at all. Just imagine these six parts as giving you the clues to how to speak about anyone having something or doing something or wanting something or loving something or speaking something or whatever it is. And we're going to be learning some more verbs in the next lesson. So stay tuned for that. Let's go through the whole verb one more time and we'll do it in the little rhythm that we always do verbs in. So I have, you have, he has. O, I, A. O, I, A. We have, you plural have, they have. Abbiamo, avete, hanno. Abbiamo, avete, hanno. O, I, A. Abbiamo, avete, hanno. O, I, A. Abbiamo, avete, hanno. O, I, A. Abbiamo avete anno. Ah, we're going to get Kitty singing again, I can just tell. Next time we will have some more verbs for you and we'll be talking a little more about the kind of things that may go wrong, the kind of medical things that you might need to have help with when you are travelling in Italy. Allora, è tutto per oggi. Sì, penso di sì. Sono stanco. Sì, mi fa male la gola. Ho mal di testa. Oddio. <laughs> Katie, stai bene? Hai mal di testa anche tu? No, I'm fine. All right, okay. <laughs> Can't wait for more verbs next time. <laughs> we hope that you've enjoyed this episode of Coffee Break Italian. Don't forget that you can go over to our website and let us know if you're feeling not so good today. Tell us what's wrong. We can't promise a solution, but of course, if you listen to a little more Italian, then that will undoubtedly help. There's more Coffee Break Italian for you on the bonus materials for this episode. You can find out all about them at coffeebreakitalianplus.com and you will be able to access our video versions, our lesson notes and our bonus audio materials in which we'll be giving you some more parts of the body and more useful language. We hope you're not feeling unwell, but come and practice your Italian all the same at our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash coffeebreakitalian. And don't forget, we are also on Twitter at Learn Italian. And of course, if you're on YouTube, then do have a look for Coffee Break Italian videos over there too. Allora è tutto per oggi. Grazie mille. Grazie a voi. Ciao. This is a production of the Radiolingua Network. Find out more at radiolingua.com.